amount of questions as you went along, and I didn't interject then. But can members please, if you've got any questions or observations or anything, to wait till after the presentation is finished, please. Otherwise, we could well be here all night. And I don't want any. Chair, no, I mean, there's nothing to go comment. Chair, can I just say, um, can I be first to make one comment? Because when I got this paperwork, I didn't read it till now because it came on the table and I should have declared an interest because okay. I'm a, a trustee in my own right of Mayor Hall and therefore I'm involved in... That's the fine, Christine. Thank okay. you. Thank Sorry, you, Christina. Paul, have you got an interest to declare? Um, I have. I was employed by the Police and Crime Commissioner's Office during the Police State Strategy and similar situation to, uh, to Councillor Moss Pratt. I wasn't aware that it was mentioned in this report. That's fine. Thank you both for that. Is there anybody else who's, having had a quick look, has got any declarations of interest? Procurator or no? Okay. So if we can, if we can keep our comments, make a note, write them down at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, in terms of the um, area reviews, um, yeah, just to say that, that we are going to be working closely with uh, with sort of the good sector um, policy, including police, health, the college, fire authority, the chamber of commerce, and the housing and the HCMA as well. So again, it's going to be a, a collective review. Um, we've actually highlighted two review areas. Yeah, um, and I'll just go through to tonight. There are, there are other areas that, that we 
questions around assets happen right there. And um, the asset management division brings to that table what we've created is a, a, an asset management template, which basically brings forward proposals for that group to discuss. And they can make decisions there on how best to move forward. We can then inform cabinet and our delegates to about what we propose to do with our assets. So that's the first line of governance that we've embedded in respect of decision making. What we also have now is an additional layer. We have two main areas for transformation across the authority. One is for the transformation of assets, and one is for the customer experience. And we have program sponsors for both of those main streams of transformation. And that all links into growth, and it links into how we're going to deliver our pledges in respect of the Wirral 2020 plan. So the Transformation Asset Board now sits at both the asset and capital group. And lots of key decisions that are proposed by the asset group will be fed up into that um, hierarchy of decision making. And what you have in that group um, are the three strategic directors, um, obviously Eric Robertson as well, and we also have the transformation program sponsors. And they will sit there and they will make sure that the decisions being made by the asset group do indeed drive forward the world plan and make sure that we are delivering our pledges. So two, two main key areas of and, and it, in respect of that, all decisions taken from there will also feed into the Royal Property Board, which is um, led by the Royal Public Estate. And it consists of all of our partners, the likes of the NHS, the police, and the ambulance and the fire authority. And because what we've got to remember is while we're getting our own house in order, we're also trying to collaborate more with our partners, hence the Royal Property Board. So decisions will also be made there and fed back to the transportation program. Now, in respect of Policies. We're very conscious that we need to make sure that the decisions we're making are, are being driven into the right area. So we're currently reviewing our asset management policies to make sure they're reflective of our current state at this point in time. So we'll be able to report those as we go along. Um, supporting strategies and decisions. We have the Concerto Asset Management System, which has been in situ now for two years um, and is, is developing at pace. We now have over 1,300 users across the authority. Um, we have a reactive maintenance help desk, which has been embedded. Our schools are actually contributing to that. They raise all of their orders through the system. We have a supplier portal, so our contractors are also interacting with us. And it basically means that we're able to make um, decisions in respect of what works carried out in our building more transparent. So we can start to build a picture of what our assets are costing us. So moving forward, we'll encapsulate um, planning maintenance for our we capture net capacity for schools. Um, so it, it, it's, it's quite a beast in its frame. Um, and that is going to be the idea of the asset management system is that we contain asset data all in one place that can be accessed by lots of different people who are collaborating to achieve the same goal. Um, and we will keep you updated on how that progresses and as more disciplines come on board. Um, obviously, sharing access information with partners or organisations is essential. So, what we've done is we web-based system, we're not restricted to any amount of users or indeed who uses it. So we need our partners to interact and, and, and look at data and review data and work on projects, we can all do it in the same place. Benchmarking is something that's hugely important because it allows us to see how we're performing in respect of all the authorities who have the same ambitions as ourselves. Now that is quite an aspirational thing because in order to do that, you obviously have to have captured the data. So we're looking to um, and, and Benchmark in 2017, where we 
school facilities for the children that live in Congo. It's all those sort of things that we're trying to encapsulate within the system. Council uh, programmes? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, again, I think we've already mentioned this, but again, just making sure that the capital programme is not being done, it's being done in a really, really intelligent uh, way. Making sure that those capital projects are actually being um, put forward for financing based on sound evidence in terms of service needs and in terms of the actual function of those buildings as well. And the accountants do come into those they do, they do come because they make the challenge every single decision at this group, which is which is what's designed for. Right, so that's that's sort of a whistle stop tour actually as to what we're doing. So ladies, that was
going to ask that question about when it was mentioned about um, assets, buying assets. I thought a chill went down my spine. I thought, well, we haven't got a canal building on this side of the river or a liver building. And I thought, I hope we're not going to become property speculators. But thanks for that, Alan. That's, that's a really allay my fears. And thank you. Yeah, well said, Jim. Christina.
anything that's planned there is done within the rules for conservation area. And also the, with the civic centre being whatever it is now, it's, it's what we've done some new building that's been assessed by English Heritage as having some sort of work as well. Yeah, um, again, this, this property is going to be a very complex cemetery. Yeah. 